Hi, Eric Gibo, ericgibo.com, and today I'm going to present you the 45mm 1.2 Zwicko, so by Olympus. So let's start. So, following uh, the test of uh, all this gear I've received from Olympus uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, by the way, I have to give it, give it back. It's not just, it's not for me. I don't keep it. I have to give it back. So I tested the OMD One Mark Three. You have the review here, and also the 40 to 150 mm 2.8 Pro. Also the review here. So I still had the 45 uh, millimeter 1.2 to test, and uh, many people were in commenting, asking my opinion. It seems that this lens uh, attracts many people, and they wanted to 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 know what I think uh well well mm, well you're gonna see okay let's carry on so let's start with the technical side of it okay well this is a 45 millimeter it would be the equivalent of a 90 millimeter in full frame it opens from 1.2 up to f16 so it means a uh, one full stop uh brighter than the 45 millimeter 1.8 Let's speak about uh, the construction, the build. Uh, it's metal, it's really good. Uh, the filter size is 62 millimeter. The size here is 84.9 millimeter, 70 millimeter uh, uh, diameter at its widest, and 410 grams. Uh, it has 14 elements in 10 groups, but I'm not getting into this uh, specification like groups, all this. You can check Olympus website. You will know uh, what uh, lens inside is aspherical and uh, anti-reflection, uh, all this, blah, 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 blah. You can check there, okay? So I'm going to speak to you about uh, what I feel, uh, the way it looks, the aspect, uh, what I've tested, what I've seen, what I think, okay? Um, all uh, pro line of uh, Olympus except the F4 line, well, at least the one I tried, the 12 to 45, have this ring here that you can actually uh, clutch like a clutch. And if you clutch back like this, you have a uh, depth of field uh, scale. And also, this become a uh, manual focus. So it's really easy. You're focusing in autofocus, you want to manual focus, you just do that. Okay. It has also a function button, you can actually program the way you want. For example, you're in continuous autofocus and you want to uh, stop it, you stop, or you want to uh, have focus speaking, whatever you do, you can just click on it, okay? And uh, then you have configured, okay? It's all metal, it's really a good, good, uh, you feel uh, your money here, and you feel the good gear here. You have a sunshade that is included and there is a lock on it, which is, I've never seen one with a lock like this. Okay, so you want to unlock, you just press here and uh, you unlock, okay, so that's included. And uh, it's protected against uh, it's splash proof, dust proof, and also freeze proof up, uh, down to 10 uh, degrees uh, under zero at the Celsius, okay, minus 10 Celsius. So, which is a big difference with the 45 millimeter 1.8 that has uh, no uh, protection uh, this way, okay. So, this is great gear so let's speak about why people want to get that oh by the way you can focus as close as 50 centimeters why do uh, people want this lens most people want it for portraits but you can also use it for sport for nature for many things uh, low light photography all this is no problem one thing we should change is when we speak about um, luminous lenses Telling luminous lenses was a nice uh, logical uh, word when you were working with uh, film photography because you couldn't change the ISO halfway of your film so uh, you would have to uh, change your lens for a more luminous one. But nowadays you can change ISO or in Olympus the stabilization is really incredible although if the subject is moving you cannot uh, go to uh, drop your speed too much but still uh, we should speak about people not searching more light, but people searching shallower depth of field. So, by the way, many people confuse depth of field with bokeh. So I'll leave you a link again. I've left it in another video also between the, to show the difference between shallow depth of field and bokeh. This is not the same thing. Although the shallowest, uh, the depth, the shallower the depth of field the more bokeh uh, aspect you will actually see, okay? But people who buy this, normally they are bokeh alcoholic or bokeh olic or what other one you call them. And uh, these should be people who want to have 
an aspect of the bokeh. Not really people who just want shallow depth of field, because shallow depth of field can get with many lenses, but the aspect is different between lenses. So here I'll show you some example uh, I've made from 1.2, then all the example I've made from 1.2 f2, didn't put 0.8, just f2, so uh, stop and a third, okay? And uh, then to eight, four, uh, so on, uh, up to uh, f16, uh, full stops, okay? So what I've, they've, con they've achieved with that is that you have a circular uh, bokeh. Uh, the, the point of light are uh, in circle. Why? Because at every uh, aperture, they get a circle uh, aperture. So it's really nice. It means even if you work at f4, 5.6, the out of focus part will have this aspect on the point of light. So, so that's nice, okay? I'll show you some example that, that technical ones and some more artistic one but the technical one is just so you can uh, com uh, compare the aspect okay and uh, also at night time is the difference okay so the bokeh is really creamy really nice i really liked it and i was really surprised that even when closing down the aspect will be obviously more in focus but still the aspect will be similar some are really nice at maximum aperture but then when you close it starts to have a really strange thing so this is not the case this is really good and then i thought well wow, let's try to uh, see the wrong things of this lens so uh, when i reviewed the 40 to 150 uh, 2.8 Pro, I noticed that at uh, 2.8 there was a bit of vignetting, really slight, but there was, okay? So I thought with this at 1.2 it must have a lot of vignetting. Nothing, nothing. I show you what I've made, nothing. I didn't see any vignetting, so I'm really surprised. Now, people who buy that kind of uh, lens normally uh, they should not think about the shop part of the picture they should search for the out of focus part for the bokeh aspect but still they want to have some sharpness because otherwise it will be everything like a, a soup okay so uh, when i had my leica noctilux 1.0 uh, using a leica m8 the noctilux was a real disaster i mean uh, the out of focus was beautiful but if you were looking for some kind of sharpness you had nothing there until until almost never okay the f8 yeah and that's it and not it was not really sharp either okay in this case at 1.2 the sharp part is already sharp not really sharp but sharp really good and then at 2.8 you also almost have maximum sharpness already so i think i was really surprised that they were able to deal with the out of focus part and also to deal with the sharpness part and it's really good so I thought, well, let's fight and look some more uh, defect defaults, okay? So let's check flare. Must have some flare. Well, no flare. <laughs> at uh, any aperture, even when I went against the sun, I could not be at 1.2 because I would need an ND filter. I couldn't do 1.2 against the sun. Uh, and you won't put an ND filter to cut light because uh, otherwise uh, the result with, would not be just a lens, would be a filter also. But if you check at f16, you do get like a star, because, which is normal because uh, the aperture is really closed. But I think I went down to f4, I didn't get flare. So this doesn't flare either. This is really incredible lens in this matter, okay? Many people want to buy this to do portraits but they don't realize how this works because they've never had a lens with such an aperture so uh, take care if you're on 1.2 uh, close portrait like of, of body okay if i'm like this my this eye will be in focus and the other one will be out of focus and normally it's not very nice so if you want to work at 1.2 in portrait it must be some really typical portrait facing uh, both eyes on the same focal plane and even though you will have the ear out of focus and the tip of the nose out of focus okay so this is important obviously if you put a person a bit further then that will be okay but take care with that so because many people they don't realize and then they see the picture they make a close-up and they realize they don't like to have only a one eye in focus okay so if it's a specific picture maybe but otherwise well that's maybe a problem the autofocus is really, really fast, really fast. 
Uh, I don't know if you try if you have tried the Canon 85 mm 1.2. It's a nightmare. It takes hours to focus. It's really hard to focus. Okay, and uh, doesn't work for me. It's a problem. So they they created the Mark II. It's a bit better, but it's still a nightmare. This one focuses like lightning. It's really fast. Obviously, if you're 1.2 just use one uh, focusing point why because uh, the sh depth of field is so shallow that uh, it's easy to to miss out so if the point is not exactly where it should be in focus uh, that will be a problem so uh, always try to get uh, the, the 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 focus point uh, activated just one point okay so uh, who is this lens for well this lens is not for everybody why because uh, people should understand that when you go to a wide aperture you search a look a kind of uh, picture in this case you search for a bokeh type and this uh, mentality has changed nowadays people say i get the 1.2 why because i've got shallow depth of field but they don't evaluate the look of the bokeh this is really different from the mentality of people who use Leica. Leica lenses uh, m lenses for example People, uh, they can get the, the latest one, but many people buy secondhand for a specific look of the bokeh part. And they say, I want the version 1 because it gives such look. I don't like the version 3 because it's too harsh. I've got the version 4, which is king of bokeh, for example. I've got this one. And th this is the way they think. And I think people should start to think again this artistic side of photography. The other focus part how it looks and pick the lens according to the look not thinking of just shallow depth of field but also the way it looks also many people make a massive mistake using these kind of lenses they think that as you can make a really shallow depth of field you don't need to compose anymore you have a rubbish bag in the back and what you do is just put uh, out of focus and that's it no uh, you will fool yourself you will fool people who don't know about photography but you won't fool people who know. And uh, although this is uh, complete, completely blurred, you still see some parts, some point of light. Uh, you still see uh, masses, things like this. Although it's out of focus, you should, sh you should show uh, a, a composition with this element that are uh, blurry, okay? So uh, this is not an excuse. It's not because you can put someone uh, surrounded by soup or potage or whatever still compose okay and also i think so if you don't need 1.2 maybe you would not buy it maybe the 1.8 is enough uh, because normally if you get you pay this extra money is because you like the look at 1.2 in this case it's a bit an exception because at other aperture the look is still really nice so that would be a, a kind of dilemma okay also buy it if you like the the out of focus part the way it looks maybe you don't like uh, this kind of creamy look you prefer to be more harsh or whatever so if you like the look yes that's for you and also buy it if you uh, need uh, this weather sealing this uh, dust proof and uh, freeze proof if you make pictures on the beach or in a humid part or portrait under the shower, for example, I mean, you don't put the camera under the shower, but the person is under the shower, for example. Yes, that's a good idea to have this lens instead of the 45 uh, 1.8 because it's a lot better protected and uh, you won't have a problem. So that, that that's a good idea to get it. So my conclusion, what is it? What is it? So really. Uh, I'm really surprised. I thought I would not like it. I thought I would... Uh, my problem is because I had uh, the uh, Noctilux 1.0 when I was using a Leica M8 and I really loved it. And one day I just got fed up with it because the look was always the same, always this uh, creamy part, really nice, but one day you get like it's, you've eaten too much uh, sweet, you know, so it's like... Ugh. It's like fish eye. Fish eye is fun, and then one day you say, "Well, I can't do much fish eye. I cannot see it anymore," and I was uh, like fed up with it. So, uh, for me, that kind of look and creamy background—that's nice, but I would not buy it myself. Okay, 
But people who look for that look, I think this is the right lens. Uh, if you are this person I described, you will absolutely love this lens. Some people will not love it because uh, when you have a, a lens with a lot of character, it's like a matter of love and hate, okay? But I think most people will lo love the, this lens. Would I buy it? Well, no, I would not buy it. Why not? Because this is not the kind of picture I would do. I would prefer to put my money in the 40 to 150 mil 2.8 and when I do some portrait and I wanted to do that out of focus I would probably use it okay but uh, otherwise uh, this would be uh, too specific too uh, specialized for me I, I, I would not need it obviously when I say uh, I would use the 40 to 150 uh, is to make picture of someone who knows I'm making pictures because uh, that's not really discreet. The 40 to 50, 150 is really large, so it would be impossible. Would be impossible not to see me. This one is not that small either, but uh, this is a bit more discreet, obviously. But I still recommend it. I still recommend it to uh, anyone who is looking for this look, this quality, uh, all this. And uh, optically, it's a small miracle, this. This is really incredible lens, honestly. And uh, I think people uh, who are in this description of, uh, of uh, use I've, I've put uh, will probably love it. And uh, yes. But don't have use, don't have use with too much 1.2. And uh, but it's uh, your ma you're, you're free to do what you want, okay? But this lens is really exceptional, and uh, I was not expecting something that good. So, thank you, Olympus, for sending me the lens. Thank you, Tito Garcia, for sending it. It works at Olympus. Thank you to you for watching the video. If you feel it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. The small button down here, a small bell. If you click on the bell, get notified when I upload a new video. My website, erigibo.com. If you have any question, can leave a comment below. I also leave you links of my gear on Amazon. Also links to other parts of my YouTube channel. And also link to my PayPal account in case you wanted to make a donation. Thank you very much. Please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.